Hello, my friends. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a few things today. Um, so bear with me. Stick it out. A lot of us older guys, we go around the block three times to get to the point. But there's reasons why us older fellas do that. Uh, there's plenty of reasons why we do it. And you'll be doing it one day too if you start trying to gain wisdom. And wisdom is something that he, one him himself can't measure himself. So, um, they know when they got it, and they can say they got it, and they do have it, but it's hard, you, you, you can't measure it yourself. That's, that's the point I'm making. Because a lot of the older fellas uh, in boxing today, we're talking about how awful it is. Uh, and, and it's true, you younger guys didn't get to live what we lived in the exciting times in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and uh, a portion of the 90s even. Uh, what, what you've had has been awful. However, I do think that the uh, Klitschko's had a, a good air because they fought anybody that was put in front of them. Uh, so I, I like those those two guys, but here's what I want to talk about today. We're going to talk about, a little bit about Joe today. Uh, I want to publicly exclaim how proud his mother and I are of him. Next week, he's got uh, final exams coming up. Uh, he's homeschooled through an academy in the state of Florida in the United States, a, a very good academy of learning. Uh, my, not my expectations, but my thoughts are that I don't think he'll, uh, in one of the exams, I don't think he'll miss no more than two questions on the entirety of the exams. Uh, it's just how hard he works, and uh, I'm not standing over him like a slave driver either. He he strives for excellence on his own. He is so much like his granddaddy, my dad, that it's not even fun. He's a true blessing to me, and I'm thankful to the Lord God every day for him. It's like my father that died... Uh, many, many decades ago when I was a, a young boy has been given back to me with my son. And it's just an amazing blessing to me. Uh, Joe also has coming up, uh, I believe it's going to be next weekend, uh, a hell of a nine-year experience now professional Boxer coming to see what he's got. Uh, this this man is a friend of ours. We do love this man, but I'm going to instruct him. Don't hold back. Let's just see what he's got. So and uh, sink or swim, you all will see. You'll see it. Um, you, ha I do want everybody to keep in mind. Joe just turned uh, 15 years old. A little over a month ago, so he's he's a kid, right? Uh, everybody that sees him or meets him, they're like, "Oh, you're in your mid twenties," but it's only because of his size and his muscularity and and the way he carries himself. Most importantly, he carries himself as a man in his mid twenties, a serious man in his mid twenties. We got Rocky here getting wanting to give him the show. Why don't you come up here and lay down beside us? This my baby. So, uh, while we got Rocky over here, I'm going to say something. Never trust a man that don't that hates dogs. Never do that. You hear Rocky crying. It's not because he's being beaten or mistreated. He's just a crybaby. And we love him for it. Uh, but we, we, we 
we got this guy coming. Uh, he, he will be sparring Joe. Any of you that would like to give some input, please do, because I am debating whether I know at minimum I'm going to ask him to go hard with Joe. Hard. Spar hard. But I am debating on whether to let, to just make it just full on, right? Of course, they'll have headgear on and mouthpieces in and groin protection. But uh, you guys give me your thoughts on that. And keep in mind, this guy's in his mid-20s. This had a plethora of amateur fights. Uh, I don't know how many professional fights he's had, but he's, he's good enough. He's, he's been a national champion in his country. So he's, he's good. Uh, we just saw a video of him going really hard with another guy, and he knocked this guy slap out. Did he knock him out with a left hook, Joe? Or was it a right? Joe. Joseph. Did he knock him out with a left hook or a right hook? Left hook. It's okay. Knocked the guy out with a left hook. Uh, and this guy was much larger than he, and and boy, he floored this guy. This guy was out. So uh, this guy's what we, we call bad news, you know, but that's what we're looking for. We're looking for bad news because good news can't handle Joe uh, at all. And we'll see if some high-level bad news can handle Joe. So... Hope, and hopefully later on in the year, uh, we have a special visitor that can give Joe, Joe all the bad news and uh, really on next level <laughs> can see him for himself what, what Joe has got. And uh, this guy's, whatever he says, will be priceless uh, to Joe. So, uh, and Joe will not be able to hang with this man that hopefully he's coming. Uh, and, uh, and this, this guy coming later in the year, hopefully, boy, he's one of the biggest head crackers in the world right now. And, uh, it has been for quite a while, so. And we love him, and he loves Joe, and I believe he loves me too. As a matter of fact, I know he does. And uh, I know he's not going to hurt Joe, but uh, whatever Joe brings to his favorite champion, uh, we, we, we know probably none of it's going to work with that. But back on this, on this hard, hard spar to full on that we're going to do. Uh, I believe Joe's just going to mow right through like he does everybody else. But, you know, this, I, I, know, I always tell you guys, I know exactly what I see. I know what's, you know, I know what the deal is. So we'll see if I'm right on this. I'm not right all the time, by no means. Uh, so, Give me your thoughts. Should Joe just go full on hard with him, or should Joe just go full on? So, uh, because I'm I'm sure that the champ that's coming this coming week, oh, he'll do whatever. Uh, I'm sure for Joe what we ask him to do, and uh, so we'll see. This is going to be a big test, but you're all going to see it, whether it's sink or swim. And, uh, you know, you always run up on somebody that can handle you and's got your number, and you got to go back to the drawing board. That's sports, folks. Uh, we know sports in this house. Uh, both Joe and I, uh, we have a uncle, his great uncle, that played for the Chicago Cubs, the Los Angeles Angels, and the San Diego Padres in Major League Baseball. Among his illustrious minor league career, 
a, a man that won the pennant with the Florida Marlins, uh, Trader Jack McKeon, who stated that Joe and my uncle, uh, had it not been for World War II, would be mentioned with those along the lines of Yogi Bear, uh, uh, Mickey Mantle, and uh, several of these other great Yankees that you hear about all the time. He said that Bud Harden would be in there had he not got injured in World War II, which he did. Uh, we also have a cousin that played for uh, Major League Ball for the Montreal Expos, whom are now the Washington Nationals. Uh, we have a plethora of collegiate uh, champions from uh, on the male side from uh, NF, uh, an NFL starting quarterback today to uh, uh, three other big school NCAA quarterbacks uh, that are that, that are cousins. Uh, that were, were quarterbacks in the past for big schools like the South Carolina Gamecocks. Uh, and one was, uh, with, I think, with the Utah. So, uh, and, and then on the female side, we've had great uh, collegiate uh, soccer players. So uh, he comes from a good line of sporting guys. Uh one of his cousins, they had four boys, and every all four of those boys won the Golden Gloves in the state of North Carolina, every single one of them, uh, in multiple different years, and some of them in some uh, multiple different weight classes. But all four of those boys won the Golden Gloves in North Carolina. So uh, we, we just got a lot going on here. Uh, sport-wise with our family, and we're very proud about that, about that heritage. So, and Joe hopes to continue that along with his education, which is the primary factor and goal because that's a lifetime, you see. Uh, so that's got to happen with any other athletic success. Uh, 100, it's, it's got to happen. It's going to happen. And, uh, the other thing I want to talk about, uh, two people. Last night, the uh, Greg Towns, former professional boxer, guy who's been in boxing all his life. Uh, he's my age. Um, he's seen it all. He learned from guys that were around years before himself. He's what you'd call old school. And uh, he's like he's like me. Me and this man, uh, he's a black guy and I'm a white guy, but you take the color off our skin, and he and I are so very similar that it's not even funny. Uh, he does like I do. He can give a good calm video one minute. Next minute, dude, he's on. <clears throat> Something's going on. Uh, it's upsetting. He let, lets everybody know about it. And he should, and that's why I do too. And uh, he put a video out. Just really, he was he was on a, another a huge boxing news channel, talking about how ridiculous it is, and it is ridiculous. Uh, and he was talking about you know, in his day. And it was in my day, too, although that man knows more in his pinky finger than I know in my hand. And I know when to say that. I know when to. It's not admitting that. It's not me admitting anything. It's just the truth and it's a fundamental fact. That guy's got it going on. He's got Not only does he have knowledge, he has the wisdom. And see, that's what these boxing channels, that's what the announcers you sit and listen to that's what the promoters and what the matchmakers who are the promoters they all lack today they don't have it uh and it's sickening so anyway 
Greg Towns is go check him out, subscribe to him. You you won't have a lack of entertainment or truth telling if you subscribe to him. Just sat back, you'll get to something that that you will be interested in and you will be glad that you subscribe to his channel. And his channel is Punching Bag Skunk. Again, Punching Bag Skunk. And uh, go, go, go give him a listen. He's a, a wise man, has the wisdom and he has the knowledge. And he was talking about, you know, all these boxing channels, all this where everybody's going to get their boxing guys up and their news from. Some of these guys, they can tell you who fought who three months ago. They can go down the cards of everybody that fought in November of 22 is in their brain. The attendance and the, the pay-per-view numbers are in their brains. Don't be listening to these jackasses, folks. And that's what they are. They're pure jackasses. Uh, young, young guys. Don't give that two cents. Uh, boxing is not a soap opera. Uh, boxing is not who, what pocketbook an effeminate boxer is going to be wearing next week or the fashion of the day. That's not this sport. You pull for who you want to pull for, but that's not this sport. And I don't mean to offend anybody by saying that. Or the style of sunglasses they're going to be wearing. Or who can look the most weird next week. That's really the thing. Uh, who can look the most weird. Because right now we have a lot of weirdo boxers. Uh, there's some great ones. Uh, and I'll get on to that in a minute when I talk about this next gentleman. But go give uh, Greg Towns, Punching Bag Skunk, a subscribe. Uh, when he goes off and lets it rip, he's like me. He lets it, it rip. And he is the kind of guy that he and I could sit and disagree out of six or eight out of ten things. And he and I are still brothers and would never, ever, under any circumstances, offend one another. We could be in strong disagreement about something. See, folks, that's, that's old school. That's how we did it. The, the thing here is these boxers and their teams were preparing for the next match. There was... The, the talk had started by then to sell tickets, but you didn't have teams and news people and gossip uh, websites banging heads over fighters. The whole focus was, hey, my guy's training or I'm helping my guy train and our team's doing all this to beat this guy in the ring. And that was it, you know, and the other team was doing the same thing. All this soap opera, oh man, boxing is awful today. It is awful today. And uh, now, my dear friend, uh, Danny Christie, from England, in England, put up a little video today. Um, and I want to state something. Uh, I, I want to say something. Boxers and fighters of all avenues uh, they go through <coughs> processes and that's, that's never being talked about today. The, the psychology of it is never being talked about today. Greg Towns over there at Punching Bag Skunk he talks about the psychology of a fighter a lot. And he knows how to do it because he was a fighter. He knows how to talk about it from a trainer's perspective because he's a trainer. He knows everything, you know. Well, nobody knows everything, but he, he knows as much as uh, Teddy Atlas, for example. He's been around the psychology of it. 
But unlike Teddy Atlas, he was a professional fighter. So he can give you extra extra perspective that even some somebody like the huge name of Teddy Atlas could not give you. So you young fighters need to be watching him. And you need to be watching this next guy uh, that I'm going to talk about, who is the light heavyweight uh, BKFC champion in England, uh, Baron Knuckle. And he came on to the, well, the psychology, let me get back to that for a second. Uh, fighters go through different psychology. And if you, if you have not fought yourself, if you have not, trained or coached yourself. Uh, you don't see the hell and the grueling and the constant uh, uh, trolling alone in the work and the commitment that boxing is. So there's a psychology that comes to it. But I've noticed from everybody, from uh, the folks that I, that, that I know a good, good little bit of man about Jerry Corey, uh, Riddick Bow, um, Roy Jones Jr. Uh, what I know about Joe Lewis, and I'm going to add a name to this: Danny Christie. Uh, these got you go through moments, and you have to understand. Now you have online added to it. See all the BS of that added to it. So, but these things still happen back in the day, many, 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 many decades ago. It's been a constant. And that is being annoyed by press people, being annoyed by fans or the general public. And all, you know, being annoyed by promoters, being annoyed by your trainer and your assistant trainers and your your calisthenics coach or whatever. You know, it's just a lot of things you have to deal with as a fighter. That's hundreds, thousands of things that most fans don't know about. So, uh, uh, I love watching Danny Christie. Uh, he's, he's a little older uh, for a fighter, but I still see his growth phases going on, and I, and I love watching that. So go to therealdannychristie.com and listen to his perspectives on boxing today and watch him as he's training and he, as he's doing things and as his walk in life is happening because uh, young boxers, you can learn the world from him. You can learn the world from him uh, in many aspects. So I would hope that you'd go watch uh, Re The Real Danny Christie on Facebook, uh, YouTube, excuse me. And maybe I'll put the thing, the, uh, the name to both their channels, their handle, I think they call them today, down there where you can hit and you can go subscribe to them. And check them out. Because it'll be a blessing to any of you young guys. Uh, it'll be a blessing to anybody. But fighters go through a lot. Uh, Joe is not going to be, uh, as he goes through his walk in boxing or in life in general, let's say if he's a public official or something, He's not going to be press friendly. And uh, I've sat back and I've thought of ways that, hey, son, we can work on this and work on that. And he's taught me, uh, Dad, it's not necessary to work on anything. My That's a part of my character. So we're going to go with that. It's a simple process. You know, if somebody says, how did you get here? He said, hard work. That sums up a thousand words. He don't have to. There's too much talking going on in this world today. So why would I try to flub that up? So I've been wrong there. Uh, K 
carries himself as a 15 year old in a teenage world he carries himself like the myth of Sonny Liston and I like that I like that nobody messes with Joe nobody a lot of people think about it but they don't do it and I'm very proud of him that way very proud of him that way and uh as I'm getting older, and the old line is, as the body goes, the young line is becoming the man in our household. Uh, well, I'm always the man in the house, but I'm talking about things. I'm so proud of my son because if we're out in public, no longer do you have to deal with one of us, me. you got to deal with two of us. And uh, he's developing, his character's good. He sees somebody being ugly to somebody. He don't want to talk about it. He wants to stop it. And uh, when he comes on the scene, so, so few words are spoken, but such a look is given or, or such a action happens that it stops. And it's intimidating. And I'm proud of him for that. We need more intimidating men to step up and do the right thing. And if that happens, the world gets better. My son, for example, if you are a six foot, four inch, 250 pound muscle bound man, and you put makeup on your face and you come up to him and you tell him, uh, call me ma'am, He's going to stop you right there. He's like, I ain't doing none of that. And as a matter of fact, you bet this is what he's done. He's done it. He's done it here. You best leave. It's beneficial for you right now. You walk away. And that you don't say nothing else. And they leave. And he's only 15 years old. But never, and I mean never, does he go out to cross anybody, school bully, gym bully, neighborhood bully. He don't do it. There's a lot of problems in this neighborhood. He went down and informed the bullies. I'm the new bully now. And there was, I think, six or eight of them down there. He said, would you like me to fight you one at a time or would you all like to come at me at one time? Because I got no problem with all of you laying all over the parking lot out here. And then he told him it's time to stop now. It's best you stay quiet. It's best you walk away. And they did. So he's operating uh in a manly way already. And he wants to stomp out evil and stomp out injustice everywhere he sees it. His heart's good. And I love him for that. And I thank Christ every day for that. Every single day I thank Christ for that. And uh, I can't express how good it feels in my heart that as I am coming to the twilight, being able to see my son step up to the plate and how wonderful he does. <coughs> I'm so thankful to Christ for that. I'm so thankful to God. I am blessed beyond measure. We don't have much money around here. We don't have too much or nothing. But I'm blessed beyond belief. I'm blessed. I never thought with all the trouble and problems I went through in life that I would be sitting back looking into a little box thing, a little folding thing, and telling anyone who would choose to listen, anyone in the world, how fortunate and blessed I am.
never would have thought that going through all these hardships in life. Point is, you 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 people, no matter what you're going through, keep keep going. You never know where life's going to end up. You never know the happiness you're going to get. Uh, if you do the right things and learn to produce and plant the right seeds, what you'll get, because everything can change in a moment. So I want you to want to tell you guys that I'm just blessed. I found the only woman in the world that will put up with me. The only one. There's only one. And it's my wife. And I'm just blessed. So I want you all to know that. And uh, just blessed beyond measure. Now, to people who, to everybody that is telling the truth that boxing is awful right now, let me express to you, hope is on the horizon. There's a, several guys coming along that aren't yes guys. They're not going to be yes, yes, yes to promoters. They're not going to be yes, yes, yes to bad boxing. They're going to come out and they're going to challenge the best guys. They're going to fight the best guys. They realize they are going to be... <coughs> the biggest money-making boxers, and boxing is coming back. And when these promoters realize that these no men are going to make them more money, they're going to open up and be receptive to it. we got some young dudes that are bad dudes coming along, and boxing is going to come back, I guarantee you. I truly believe my son's going to be one of them. I truly believe that. Uh, people are dying to see a quiet man knock everybody the fuck out. They're crying for that. Right? Like Deontay Wilder. Well, he should be in the Guinness but no, let me tell you somebody, Ernie Shavers' his punch would put Deontay Wilder to shame. Don't want to hear it. You guys, you young guys haven't seen what we've seen, what we old guys have seen. Uh, there's nobody today, nobody, that could get through a prime Larry Holmes, a prime Mike Tyson, uh, or many more other prime fighters back. There's nobody. Nobody. I, I do respect, love, admire, and I'm a big fan of uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder uh, because they had the trilogy. Them two guys laid everything to the side. Credit to both of them and fought, and fought, and fought again. And I would have sat around for a fourth fight. I don't know about you all. Uh, way better than the other junk we've been seeing. You know? So, I don't know. That's my thoughts on that. I don't believe there's a man walking today that can beat Tyson Fury. I don't think none of them can. I don't think nobody has a puncher's chance against him. I don't think nobody's going to outbox him. I don't think nothing. And Tyson Fury could go down. Uh, it's still possible if some newer, fresh guys come in here that are great fighters also, as Tyson is a great fighter, and they get it on. But Tyson Fury is not the greatest. There's, that anybody could even dare mention that or contemplate that's ridiculous. But he's a great fighter. So nowhere near the greatest. Uh, in my opinion right now, he needs to have a lot more fights. And he, uh, 
uh, and they need to be good quality fights. The only real guy he's fought that's gave him problems has been Deontay Wilder. Who else has given Tyson Fury problems lately? But then again, who have either one of them chose to fight lately? So, you know, I hear this mess about Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua was never a great fighter. And he's going through some psychological... And I don't dislike him. Please do not misunderstand me. But he's not a... There's no... The only great fighter in the heavyweight division that we have right now is Tyson Fury. There's Tyson Fury and then there's the pack. And the pack is nowhere near uh, Tyson Fury. Now, some could argue and say, well... The first stint Ali had, it was him and nobody in the pack. That's not necessarily <coughs> the truth. Uh, Muhammad Ali came up on the giant. He won that. Uh, he had some other good, good fights. Uh, he fought true, former, the true, true, strong former champion in Floyd Patterson who held the belt for years, undisputed. Uh, after that, he came back. He had some hell of some fights in his comeback. And, uh, you know, the, the, the fights with Frazier, the fights with Norton, uh, George Foreman, and we haven't had any of that. Muhammad Ali was way great. I think Muhammad Ali is even considered more great than he was. Uh, and everybody at the time was in agreement that he wasn't nowhere near as great as he said he was or thought he was. Nobody believed that. As a matter of fact, during uh, Sonny Liston's last uh, national TV televised fight, Howard Cosell, you know, Howard who said late years later, Ali's the greatest there ever was, you know, and made a lot of money off of Ali. Uh, he said at the start of that fight, when uh, Liston was going to fight Leotis Martin, uh, he even said that there was something wrong in both those fights. He mentioned the hernia fight that never took place, that uh, Sonny Liston was in such great shape, he would have whooped Muhammad Ali. Uh, he said the, the punch was a phantom punch. It wasn't real, and he said it all on ABC television and, uh, in 1969, and everybody said it. And something happened in the 70s to propel, propaganda propelled a myth, right? And boxing is made for myths, and I'm not taking anything away from Muhammad Ali, but I don't think he was the greatest ever. His nickname was the greatest. That was his boxing nickname. Uh, Mike Tyson's nickname was Iron, but Mike was not real Iron, and I don't believe that Ali was the real greatest. It's just my opinion. Uh, but we don't have. We're not going to fight over these things. Old people who know what they've seen, we don't fight over these things. So I've went and babbled along over a bunch of different stuff. I hope somebody watches this and gets something decent off of it or uh, even gets not how to be yourself or whatever. If you get something good out of it, take it. Uh, but mad respect to... Uh, uh, Greg Towns over at Punching Bag Skunk and Danny Christie over at The Real Danny Christie on YouTube. Uh, these guys are speaking honest, good opinions and what I consider to be truth on boxing today. And no one should harbor a bad feeling at either one of these gentlemen for uh, feeling the way they do or me feeling the way I do. Uh, if you want to group yourself over in a soap opera, go group yourself over there in a soap opera. And you can have all the effeminate talk and stuff you want to have. But uh, 
with us older guys, this is not not the venue to be discussing the fashion of the day or having fantasies about a boxer that maybe aren't masculine. So I'll leave that at that. Uh, much love to everybody. Again, quickly, it'll probably be next weekend when Joe takes the hard spar or the full long spar. Anyone give us suggestions about that? Appreciate be appreciated. Uh, we sure don't want nobody to get hurt. That's that's this venue for Joe and and for the professional. It's not the venue for them to hurt themselves. Uh, uh, there's no real pride involved for either one of them. They both love each other uh, as boxers and as human beings and. Uh, there's no beef there. There's no nothing. We're just trying to see what Joe's got. I already know what this other guy's got. He's got a lot. But we we got to see what Joe's got. See any suggestions down there? Please put them down. Uh, much love to everyone, to my Christian brothers and sisters. God bless you. I hope he provides you with what you need, even over what you want, because he knows what's best for you. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This is another 45-minute ramble. Uh, helps me vent. I hope it helps you if you listen, listen to me. So blessings, and everybody have a great weekend. Much love to you all.